my name is Face McKelvin and I uh, ride for the Orange Seal Off-Road team. Um, I started off in mountain biking but in the last two or three years I've kind of diversified into uh, whatever seems like the biggest, most exciting events in North America and more and more we're seeing that sort of splinter in a bunch of different directions. So. It could be the Mountain Bike National Championships last, like last weekend, it could be the Leadville 100 in a few weeks, um, or it could be a race like tomorrow, which we do on road bikes. Um, so it's been really fun to just kind of participate in this diversification of, of racing. Um, and we get to use a whole bunch of different bikes. Bike setup is always a question. Um, and it's just been really cool to see uh, bike racing in North America appeal to almost anybody. Um, there's something for everyone these days. So it's been just a, a really great experience to try to participate in as much of that as possible. So, and then alongside me here we have three of my teammates um, who also predominantly come from the mountain bike side of things but are brave and venturing off into uh, new realms tomorrow and I don't know, how are you guys feeling? Are you excited or nervous or scared? Yeah. I think all of it. <laughs> this is, by the way, this is Sibilia. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves quickly? Sure. Yeah. Um, I, my name is Sibilia Blanc. I am primarily a cross country mountain bike racer. We just came straight from Mountain Bike Nationals. Tell them, how you, tell them how you did. I won. <laughs> um, I'm still U23, so I won cross country U23 and then the Elite Short Track last weekend. Um, we are coming straight from 9,000 feet at in the high mountains, so this is a lot different, and we're coming onto completely different bikes. So, in about six hours longer than last weekend. So, I'm excited, nervous, all of the above. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get our guys in the yeah. ready for their show. My name's Hannah Finchamp. I'm also uh, mostly find myself on the mountain bike. I was on the 2020 Olympic long team, but I also had the opportunity to try my first gravel race in 2020 at the Mid South, and I came away the winner there, and that was an extremely grueling and muddy and gnarly event. And so I'm excited to test my grit in. Very seemingly, it'll be very different conditions tomorrow on some really hot, hot roads. So, I'm looking forward to it. My name is Cole Patton. I'm also a mountain biker. Um, and yeah, it's really cool to see events like Belgian Waffle Ride in the incredible community around it. I think there's 4,000 people starting tomorrow, which just blows my mind. I've never done an event like that. Um, most of our fields are really small besides going to World Cups, which are 150 people max. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited. I think getting to the finish line tomorrow will just be a feat in itself. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to be here. And we have some really good, have some really good teammates to show, show me the ropes. So what's the plan for tomorrow? Um, personally, with these races, I think letting the roar, letting the course kind of beat your competition before you try to is a good policy. That's always served me well. They're, they're races of attrition, so just trying to limit mistakes. Um, and especially tomorrow, you know, we're on we're on bikes that are suited predominantly for the pavement and smooth dirt road sections, but obviously there's a lot of single track and, and uh, rocky stuff out there too. So um, getting through those sections unscathed so that the race can really be on and hopefully we can make our move uh, later in the day. But I think will be the, the name of the game. What do you guys think about that full shot, though? And that's going to be the scariest part. Yeah. yeah. Uh, downhill paved, downhill tailwind full shot into a 180 degree. <laughs> like even as mountain bikers, I think yeah. we're all terrified. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's going to be sketchy and like, yeah, just that massive group in the pavement going 40 plus miles an hour. Yeah. We're so not used to that. It's definitely a balancing act between risking it enough to be in the front and also risking ending the race. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And still trying to save matches for the end. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what? The first yeah. 30 minutes, 40 I minutes. Very early on yeah. in the race. Yeah. I think the name of the game tomorrow is Adapt. Oh, and come give adapt, us advice. Because it's like. In 135 miles, everything is going to go exactly. So here, here we have uh, our Orange Seal family member, Colin Strickland. 
to uh you need a bucket or something. <laughs> <laughs> need your bucket. I'm commandeering your bucket. How appropriate. Um, no, but we're trying to, we're looking kind of like idiots right now, trying to give each other advice, but we've never done this race. You've done it, this is your third one? My third one. Yeah. Tell us what to do. Tell us all of your secrets. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, like, this is like a race for cats. You have to like, have your wits about you the whole day. Um, you have to know when the pinch points are coming, and like, you don't just like get to the front, but you have to like time it. Yeah. And there's just a bunch of pole shots. I mean, yeah, well, it's really like the first couple, really the first one is key. Um, I mean, imagine a field of 500 stringing out into a single file. It's a mess. So like timing when you surge up that I don't think you need to worry about it. We're, we're storming down a canyon at like 35 miles an hour, and then we all of a sudden we do this rise, and then a U turn into the single track. So that's kind of like. I have a question. If you have good position for that U turn, is that make or break, or are people still jostling for position on the 40 mile per hour descent right before you make the 180? Could be second 180. You could certainly do that. I wouldn't advise it. I bet everyone's going to be holding their position from the U turn give or take a few wheels. So like go really hard to that u -turn. And then just hold it. That's, I mean, you can take four or five wheels in the single track, but... No, I mean, sorry, I mean like the pavement U-turn. Sure. Sure, I mean, yeah, so it's pretty It's pretty much set once you go into the single track and you get to hop up that curve. It's a mess. It's a mess. You know, you get 15 wheels back and it starts to just mass up and you have to like stop and a lot of people get off their bike and they don't know how to get up a curve at low speed. It's, yeah, that's... Do you think that people will be pushing it once they get into the single track? Like, yeah. Do you think all these mountain bikers are just gonna get on the yeah. throttle? Yes. I, so it used to be a short section of single track, and you jump back on the pavement and do that climb out of the out of the reservoir, which is about a five minute climb. So anyone could get back in attention. But now, if you're a good bike handler, you can just keep pushing it in the dirt all the way along the reservoir. So now they they essentially connected the two sectors, like that nasty rock drop that used to be not like we were on the tarmac going around it so I think it's a great opportunity for like this good endurance the, the mountain bikers with good endurance uh, we have so much firepower now we only used to have 10 big engines now we have like 30 so you don't want to ride with some of the, the dainty climbers later who knows I mean yeah, yeah. anyway cool all right, now we know. Now we know how to win. Yeah. I think you guys will be fine, aside from just like, you do need to make a couple of notes of the course. Yeah. What are your biggest notes? I mean, surf, surfing the first 10 miles and then being in position with matches, if you need them, yeah. at that U-turn is key. Yeah. Totally key, as far as I can see it. Like, you can really just, you guys will be able to just feather the, get the dirt make up wheels if you need to and recover and, um, yeah it's, it's a front loaded race and then it becomes just survival. attrition yeah. yeah you make it through black canyon is long sustained climb and you know you want to I don't know that should be no problem and then coming back yeah <laughs> so many like, sec yeah, like sectors of this race fast. Keep it's a fast. tailwind out it's a, it's a strong tailwind out the valley uh, for the first half of the race so if you, you know anyone who wants to get rid of climbers that's the only hope really unless you force an error later because once you start getting within range of like double peak it's kind of futile if you're not one of the best power to weight range folks um, so yeah it's a, it's a tailwind out you go through uh, black canyon you do a big loop on tarmac and come in in a blazing headwind 
in the valley. So it's pretty futile, like chasing or getting away solo. Um, so we stayed together all the way till like we get back to the dirt near the near the reservoir, and that's when it can kind of fracture. You can kind of force a split with technical ability, and then you drop in and climb out of the reservoir, and then go up double peak for the final time. And that's really where like if you're in the front group and you have the legs. That's it. Yeah, that's the because there's nothing you can do. I mean, let's go home and make some notes. Yeah. Yeah. You got a big note card in your. Uh, that thing's great. Yeah, yeah. I'd highlight some stuff. Yeah. For <laughs> everything. Because there's a lot on it. Yeah. Ooh.